Today we're going to read a wonderful story called Old Black Witch by Wendy and Harry Devlin. Open this up. Oh, she looks fun. I like her. You see her flying across that lemon-colored moon? Dinkini's mother had made a long trip to New England. They didn't have much money and they wanted to buy an old house to turn into a tea room. Nikki's mother had in mind a very special kind of house for the tea room. She thought it should be old and warm and cozy. They looked and looked for such a house. At last they found a man who said he had just the right house for a tea room. He said it was old and warm and cozy. He really thought it was old and broken down and dreadful. Nicky and his mother were too tired to even think. They bought the house. When all the papers were signed, they went out to the house. Nicky's mother opened the squeaky old door with the rusty key. The sun had gone down and the house was dark and chilly. Nikki began to build a fire in the big fireplace. The fire did not start very easily and puffs of smoke soon filled the room. Suddenly, squawk, thump, and down from the chimney fell a big black mess. It was covered with cobwebs and made terrible sounds. It stumbled out of the fireplace into the room. From its long pointed hat to its long pointed shoes, it was covered with ashes. It was a fright. It was furious. And it was an old black witch. Old black witch glared into Nikki's face. Who told you to build a fire in my fireplace? She shouted, stamping around and shaking her broom. Jumping Jehoshaphat, you've scorched my Blasted broomstick. Um, this, this is our fireplace in our house because we bought it, Nikki said politely. And what, what are you doing in our chimney? Old Black Witch had expected to see the boy scream in fright and climb the closest curtain. Now she looked hard into Nikki's face. She pointed a long crooked finger at the tip of Nikki's nose. She croaked, this is my chimney, my fireplace, my house. She looked at her watch. Oh, giblets, she screeched. I have been asleep for 100 years. Now, you just skedaddle. This is my house. Scoop, boo, scat, run. Nikki's mother, who could hardly believe what she saw, now spoke to Old Black Witch. We bought this house to make a warm, cozy little tea room with red checkered curtains, bunches of sweet William on the tables, and homemade biscuits with honey. And blueberry pancakes, added Nikki. Bats, screamed the old witch. Over my dead body! This house must have big cobwebs in the corners, black curtains, some old toads in the fireplace, and three inches of dust on the floor. Old black witch cracked her knuckles, popped her eyes and made an awful noises. Nonsense, Nikki's mother answered calmly. Then what, what will become of me, muttered old black witch. There, there, are, there are many old broken down houses left, you know. Well, if you'd really like to stay, you may have a room in the attic, said Nikki's mother. Old black witch grumbled all the way up to the attic. But after some banging around, she settled down in a little room under the rafters. Oddly enough, this little room pleased Old Black Witch. The cobwebs hung heavy with dust, and a family of squeaky bats nestled under the near the roof. There, the wind blew the shutters, bumped, and the old beams made spooky music. She would have liked some pets, such as a few spotted toads. Yes, she thought a couple of spotted toads would have suited her nicely. Downstairs, Nicky and his mother began the hard work of fixing up the old house. The cleaning, the scrubbing, the painting and polishing went on for weeks. Old Black Witch wasn't much help. She switched around on her scratchy old broom, flitting 
from stairs and posts to corners and cupboards, shrieking and cackling and making rude remarks all the way things were going. One evening, she sailed through this window so sparkling and clean that she thought it was open and the crash was ear splitting. It was like a clap of thunder. It was very noisy. Old Black Witch was hopping mad. She zoomed back into the kitchen, kicked over a bucket of suds and shook glass out of her broom all over the clean floor. When Nikki scolded her for half an hour, Old Black Witch just pulled her long pointed hat over her long pointed nose and pretended that she was asleep. <sighs> Finally, in spite of Old Black Witch, the tea room was ready. Just as it had been planned, there were red checkered curtains and there were bunches of sweet William on the tables. The homemade biscuits were delicious and the blueberry pancakes were the best for miles around. From the very beginning, the jug and muffin tea room was a success. Although people had heard that the house was haunted by an old black witch, no one believed such nonsense. Yet they wondered who it was that shouted down from the attic window. Boo! My, who is that? Scat and Ratchet Fratch! And all the ladies who came to see the clever new tea room. They all waved back at the old witch and said, Oh, how quaint. Oh, how sweet. One day, Nikki's mother went upstairs and knocked on old Black Witch's door. Black Witch, dear, there is an awfully big crowd downstairs and I need help with the pancakes. Nikki's mother looked very tired. Eh. Can't stir a little, said old Black Witch. It had been a hundred years since she had last cooked, but she soon found herself in the kitchen with a nice clean apron and lots of eggs, flour, and blueberries. Then, with a pinch of this and a pinch of that, old Black Witch's blueberry pancakes were simply wonderful. Before long, Nikki's mother let her serve some of the pancakes. Look at, can you see that? And there's some cake. When the customers stared, Old Black Witch asked them, What's the matter, dearie? Is my slip showing? <laughs> Don't worry, I made them myself. That's why some people worried. But they had to admit the pancakes were marvelous. Old Black Witch was soon beginning to enjoy all the attention. And she began singing in her cracked voice as she put the pancakes on the tables. Sometimes she sang, Boil cauldron, make a brew. What kind of berries make pancakes blue? Boil and bubble, dance a jig. If you eat all these, you're a polka dot pig. Snakes and snails and gophers' knees. If you think these are bad, then just taste these. Not all people who heard about the jug of muffin tea room were nice, quiet ladies. Let's see. Can you see someone who might not be a nice, quiet lady? <gasps> you know who they remind me of? Those nasty people from 101 Dalmatians. Don't they look like them? <sighs> Stories of the famous tea room reached the ears of two very greedy thieves who decided to pay a, t a visit to the old house. They made very careful plans. They put on their sneakiest sneakers and with a final shh, they made their way through the dark. The night was blue with a great lemon moon peeking through the trees. It was Old Black Witch who heard them. She tiptoed down from the attic. In the light of the great lemon moon, she saw the thieves shaking money from the sugar bowl into a bag. Her face wrinkled into a smile and her eyes glowed in the corner where she hid. Old Black Witch knew evil and believed in it to a point. These were her kind of people. She was about to cackle. <laughs> Go to it, boys. When she realized they were stealing from her. After all, blueberry pancakes had made the money. After all, it was her blueberry pancakes had made the money in the sugar bowl. Sudden fury made her hop up and down. She banged the floor with her broom and the greedy thieves were startled and frightened until they saw that old Black Witch was really quite tiny. They picked her up, sputtering and kicking, and stuffed her into the almost empty flour barrel. Then they went back to their stealing. However, the two thieves did not see 
the barrel rise, on the, the lid of the barrel rise. They did not hear old black witch whisper three magic words. They did not see her eyes cross twice and a sudden puff of smoke. But the thieves suddenly disappeared. Where they had been, two green and brown toads blinked at each other in the moonlight. Look, see the see how the smoke was the outline of what they looked like before, and then now poof, they're toads. In a twinkling, old Black Witch scooped them up in her apron and popped them into a wooden cage. From then on, old Black Witch had two strange spotted toads in a room. Things went along very well for everyone after that. Old Black Witch helped quite often in the tea room. She demanded days off in which to be nasty, but then most witches would. Nikki's mother no longer looked tired, and Nikki grew rosy in the country air. Old Black Witch often told stories to Nikki about the bad old days. But I know you are really a good witch, he would say, looking at her fondly. Then Old Black Witch would look out the window, crack her knuckles, and wink at the dusty crow that lived in the mulberry tree. Bats, she would say. Bats, crickets, and snakes knees. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lovely story.